New information on a cybersecurity breach targeting government websites. They appear to be spreading a pro-ISIS message. A number of state websites hacked over the weekend, so they displayed ISIS propaganda. Among the victims, Ohio Governor John Kasich. His website was replaced by a black ISIS flag, but it's unclear who was behind the attack. Alex Hammerstone is with the Governance Risk and Compliance Team at Trusted Sec. He is a cybersecurity analyst. Alex, thanks very much for being with us. Is this necessarily an ISIS uh, project? So not necessarily. You know, sometimes these things can be, you know, some, some people that find a vulnerability and want to get attention, so they'll use something that's in the news. Uh, so this can get more attention like this and, and claim to be this. How hard is it, though, to, to hack into a government website like, like the Ohio site we've talked about? So in this case, it didn't look like it was that hard. Um, you know, I, I think that it's common that what you'll find is that there's a very simple password or username, and, and generally that's how they get in. This is a, a different kind of breach or attack than you might usually see in that it's a defacement. Well, so you can think of it more like, you know, uh, spray painting your name on the front of a bank, not necessarily breaking into the vault. Okay, but I, I guess it raises a lot of concerns because our state and, and federal governments have a lot of personal information about each and every one of us. Uh, does an attack like this suggest that that, uh, that information has been corrupted somehow? So there's not an indication that information has been corrupted, but it is concerning when you see this level of, of security at, at a, a website like this, because it could mean that there's a larger uh, lack of security overall. You know, one of the challenges with the government is, you know, I'm a resident of Ohio, hmm. so I have to give them my data. If a bank or somebody isn't having this, the security that I would like, I can change banks. I cannot choose not to give information to the state. So uh, the, the information you say has, has likely not been stolen <laughs> Uh, it's not like they b broke into the vault, as you said. What's, what is the lesson here for other states, other governments? The lesson is, you know, go with complex passwords. You know, make sure that you're keeping those passwords secure. And, and, and there's lots of things that you can do that are pretty basic cybersecurity that it appears is not happening right now. Kind of interesting that, you know, the United States did invent the Internet, um, you know, furnished, furnished it to the rest of the world. And what it seems to have done is put... You know, even countries like North Korea on, on a much more level playing field in the cyber world and especially the world of cyber attacks. Well, so there's certainly, you know, there are con contributors from all over the world that contributed to the technology that, that created the World Wide Web as we know it today. But absolutely it's interesting that, you know, what's, what's happened is that now somebody in, in, in a basement in, in Europe or, or really anywhere in the world, you know, can access your data just like they're sitting next to you. And it's not necessarily, I mean, these aren't always state actors that are, that are going after uh, information, you know, hacking and so forth. They're not necessarily motivated by the old, say, Cold War ideology or something that I grew up with. Absolutely. And, and, and the same as you might see graffiti. You know, sometimes it's just for the sake of, of putting your name out there or showing that you can do it. Um, a lot of people are just doing it, you know, for the fun of it or, or it could be a state actor. So you really, it's hard to know right off the bat what it is. I want to talk to you about another story that's in the news right now. Microsoft is confirming that some of the source code for Windows 10 was leaked online. How big a problem is that for you know, future users or maybe even current users of Microsoft uh, software? So what we're seeing right now is it looks like what was leaked was, was what they share with their partners. So people that develop, you know, whether you're printer technology or, or software. Um, and, and so it, it is things that are not public, but it's not necessarily the, the secret source code that, that could cause a big problem. I think there are two things. One is obviously anytime there's, there's source code out there like that, it can make it easier to look for vulnerabilities. But also it, it is indicative that you know, maybe Microsoft has an issue keeping their, their code private, which could, could portend a larger issue. But, but we've seen in the past you know, uh, hacks developed from source code that allowed you know, some, some terrible things to take place. The, the Sony Pictures uh, hack, for instance, is, is one that comes to mind. You're fairly confident that, that that's not going to be the case here? So based on the indications, I know that we've seen, you know, it's been over a decade ago, there was some, some Microsoft source code release that did not end up having the impact that I think a, a lot of security professionals may have been concerned about initially. Uh, I think that, that definitely there's cause for concern, but based on what we're seeing now, it looks like these are uh, the types of uh, uh, code snippets that would deal with, with drivers and that kind of thing, so not necessarily the base source code. All right. Uh, let's hope you're right about that. It's pretty technical stuff that guys like you understand. We appreciate your expertise. Alex Hammerstone, thank you. Thank you very much.